down low to fight down. But um, you know, starting to growing up when I was a little kid, I was uh, you know, my mom, you know, they thought because I grew up in Centerville, you know, it's not really a good neighborhood, and uh, you know, for them, you know, for me not to, you know, get into drugs, jail, or anything, you know, they put me uh, my mom and dad. You know, they um they put me in the sports. Uh, when I was like six, I started drinking papuana, and from there, it just you know, started getting into basketball, baseball, and when I hit high school, I um you know just focused all on football and um <clears throat> and all that stuff. And you know, I thought football was gonna take me to college and all that. And um you know, my senior year, I got a couple scholarships offers, and you know, things didn't go right with SATs and. You know, I didn't know good, so uh, I didn't get into college, so I uh, went to join the Army, and, um, you know, I failed the test there, and uh, I didn't get in, and, um, you know, so my dad brought me down to the West End Gym, um, and uh, we met Dickie, and got into boxing, and all that stuff, and basically it just, you know, boxing just grew on me, and, uh, you know, I did the Golden Gloves, I won the Golden Gloves, and then uh, we turned pro at, I think, 20 years old. And um, we just basically have been, you know, sticking to it from uh, from there on. Joey was um, a very quiet kid. I never, ever expected him to get into boxing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. He was always in sports. I kept him. He started sports when he was five years old. Mm -hmm. We always lived in Lowell, and I didn't want him to fall into the wrong crowd, mm -hmm. get, you know, getting involved with the wrong people. So I always kept him in sports. Most of the time he played basketball football and baseball. He would leave one sport, Mama! change in the car, mm -hmm. and literally go to another sport. So he was mm -hmm. pretty much all sports when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. He was a very quiet kid, so that's why he never, never got in any fights. Was not never mouthy. He was a pretty good kid. Mm -hmm. I know a year or two back he was jumped and stabbed at a nightclub. Yes, he was stabbed five times. I got it. One of his friends called me at five in the morning. Mm -hmm told me that Joey got stabbed. So I woke up my husband, we rushed to Lower General Hospital. I was in tears, I was freaking out. And when we got to the hospital, the doctor said that, I, I asked him, you know, is is it, you know, a bad stab? And he said, well, there's, there was five stab wounds, but they're superficial. Mm -hmm. I said, five stab wounds? I thought he only got stabbed once. And he said, no, he got stabbed twice in the left side of his stomach, then on his left side, and then twice in the back. Mm -hmm. And then he was rushed to a Boston hospital, and I just followed him in a car after that. Mm -hmm. And then I wouldn't let him out of my sight for probably a good six months after. Mm -hmm. If he wanted to go out at the bars and have a couple drinks with his friends, I told him to make sure he stay out of Lowell, mm -hmm. and a few times my husband actually went with him mm -hmm. because I did not want him left alone. Because the person was never caught who, who did it. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, growing up in Lowell is uh, for me it was it's normal. You know, you hear stories from other people who've never been to Lowell about how bad it is, but uh, when you grow up in it, it's just it's everyday life for you. So it was nothing special either way to me. It was nothing like. We had to walk down the street and see all types of crazy things, or it's just home for me. Um, the injury that I suffered was uh, a major one. Um, my jaw, when I got my jaw broken, I was undefeated. I faced some guy, um, Andre um, Hepville from uh, Philadelphia. Um, was the last last opponent um, option. Um, it was a tough fight. Uh, I got my jaw broken in the first round, and um, I kept fighting, and then I just couldn't take the pain no more. So, you know, I called it quits and uh, you know and anybody who knows me you know I don't I don't give up but that the pain was just uh, too much too, uh, too much there and um, you know all that stuff so uh, that definitely you know that definitely helped me back from boxing for a good year you know um, I had my jaw wide shut um, I got titanium plates in my jaw now um, I went through depression I went through you know pills I went through um, you know just emotional stuff that uh, I went through um, you know, took took effect on my family big time. Um, you know, I haven't really, really talked to nobody for like, you know, for months and months. Um, and uh, you know, doctors, the doctors said that, you know, it's not a good idea that, you know, I fight anymore. But you know, boxing is the only thing I know now these days. And 
it's how I make a living. So, you know, I um, I kind of was stubborn and, you know, I said, you know, the hell with it. And, um, you know, I chanced it. And, uh, you know, thank, you know, you know, thank to God, you know, the Lord's like looking over me. And, uh, you know, everything's good. My jaw's, uh, you know, healed 100%. Uh, you know, I've been fighting for, I've been fighting for, you know, two, two and a half, three years already, you know, since the injury. And, um, you know, everything's going good. And, uh, you know, just uh, basically just keep training hard. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking for, uh, you know, to May 9th. A week after he broke his jaw, it was Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And he was just totally miserable because of all the food. That's his favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. He couldn't eat nothing. I had a pretty much puree everything. Mm -hmm. Come sit down. Stop. Right now. I had a puree all his food and all, all his medication was liquid. And he pretty much couldn't do really much for himself. He was in a lot, a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And that's one fight that, that's why I'm a nervous wreck to all his fights because I just keep... That just keeps coming back when mm -hmm. he broke his jaw and it's the side of his jaw going to the side of his face and then all when he collapsed with all the blood and me and my my middle son Tyler who's 15 well he's 15 now but when that happened we were front row and I knew something happened in the first round I just knew that there was something wrong and I was yelling at the referee to stop the fight mm -hmm. and they wouldn't stop the fight and then once Joey's mouthpiece kept falling out and then he just ended up collapsing, like, almost at the end of the fourth round. But he kept fighting with one hand. Mm -hmm. So he, he did really good, but he doesn't remember one thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Yeah, very good thing. Like, I never thought he was going to be a professional boxer. I thought he was just going to, you know, do it, stay in shape, do the golden gloves, and then stay in shape, go to college, and then play football. But mm -hmm. college didn't work out, and then when he decided... To become a professional boxer, I said, as long as, you know, you've got good trainers, and as long as, you know, you know, Mickey and Dickie, mm -hmm. then it's all yours, and I'll stand behind them. Okay. The day of the fight, I'm a little nervous, mm -hmm. and I'm fine, but the minute he walks in the ring, my heart goes in my stomach, and I just totally freak out. Mm -hmm. How did you get into boxing? Uh, through Mickey and Dickie, you know, my uncles. Um, I've been around it since I was a little kid, you know, going to the gym with them. But um, I always did other sports when I was little, and I never thought I would box, really, until uh, Dickie came out of jail. And uh, I was 15. He brought me down to the gym, you know, just to stay in some shape, and I fell in love with it. Uh, tell me about your first fight. First amateur fight? Or just first fight ever? Yeah, okay. Um, I was 16 years old, and like I said, I started when I was 15 with Dickie, and I was uh, always training around Mickey, so it, like, it grew on me. And um, I had my first fight in the gloves in Lowell, where I'm fighting now, when I was 16 years old. So this is your homecoming fight to Lowell. Yeah. Why has it been so long? Uh, it's been long because, uh, you know, other promoters, uh, you know, didn't want to take the chance of losing money and throwing a fight in a blue-collar town because they knew, you know, they, they thought it wasn't going to sell out. But right now, me and Sean's names are so big right now in, in Lowell. Um, you know, all our friends and family and everybody's coming out to see us, you know, she's going to support us. And, um, you know, I want to, you know, thank, like, CFC Promotions, uh, Cynthia and uh, Wasi for, you know, believing in us and throwing this fight in Lowell. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a big fight for me, Sean, you know. we got a lot of pressure on our shoulders, you know. we got a lot of, um, you know, sacrifices we've been, made, we've been making. And, um, you know, we're just going to go out there and, uh, you know what I'm saying, do our best. And, uh, you know, I'm fighting for, you know, a big title, you know, USBO, and, uh, you know, I'm training hard, and uh, I'm just going to keep training hard all the way up until the fight, and, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just happy that it's finally in Lowell, it's finally in our hometown, you know, we never got to fight in our hometown before, so, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, me and Sean are, you know, definitely glad that it's definitely here for once, and, uh, you know, it's just basically it's time to rock and roll.
How do you prepare for a fight? It's intense, you know, um, this is one sport where, I mean, not the only sport, but it's a sport where you can't cut corners because your health is on the line every time you step in the ring, you know, something bad could happen. So you want to prepare yourself physically and mentally 100%. That way, when you go into the ring, you know that you've done every possible thing you can, and then all you have to do is just apply your trade and just fight. You don't have to worry about being in shape and all that. All that's done beforehand. To the top, I'm about to take it, celebrate, nearly famous, got haters, I guess I made it, fuck them all, that's how they made me, keep it real and never fake it, Joey B, you know the name, is no patience, it's all been wasted, by now, you're probably sick of hearing all about the bag of that pack, but fuck your feelings, I'm selfish, sending a message, even medics couldn't end this motherfucker, but still, I keep it moving, tremendous amounts of pressure, pretentious and pompous people, pretending they proud to see you blowing up, just like you dreamed it, it's crazy, your idols, becoming equals, the rush, you just can't beat it, the speedball and a rap, fuck a frat, the homeless shelter, where I put the pen to pad, so my house, I built the lab, sounded shitty, but shit, you should've seen it, dream I seen was like the prettiest shit, I'm talking no more fiends, and all my friends about the street, I'm talking Ten years clean, surrounded by the finest women The violence, they finally stopped it In a city, peace treaties along with the Middle East Soldiers, families, resting easy All my peoples, it pass Yeah, they back, smiles crack, kicking back, relax Peace To the top, I'm about to take it, celebrate Nearly famous, got haters, I guess I made it Fuck them all, it's how they made me Keep it real and never fake it Day to day is how I take it Joey B, you know the name is no patience It's all been wasted, yeah, yeah To the top, I'm about to take it, celebrate Nearly famous, got haters, I guess I made it Fuck them all, it's how they made me keep it real and never fake it Day to day is how I take it Joey B, you know the name is no patience, it's all been wasted A little fact, life happens so rapidly act fast I feel the drive from me past me I took the shot, hit the gas and I'm gone Driver's seat, destination unknown Understatement underground is where I'm staying No matter the situation, you can put it on my grave or my chain That boom bap uh, What's going through your mind when you go into the ring? You know, just, just executing the game plan You know, you and your uh, trainers come up with a game plan now you try to stick to that and uh, come out with the victory. Uh, what are you doing when you lose the fight? Ah, uh, shit. Ah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I haven't felt that in a while. And I hopefully uh, won't be feeling that anytime soon. But, um, you know, you go back to the drawing board and uh, you learn from it. You have any injuries, uh, rehab, anything like that? Uh, no, not right now. Everything's good. Um, you know, I'm... No past Le injuries? Or? Yeah, I mean, I've broken my hand, stuff like that. My last fight in Chicago, I broke my left hand in the first round. And um, had a fight through it. You know, I ended up winning the six-round decision. But uh, that that comes with the sport. You know what you're getting yourself into. All right, I think that ought to do it. Thank you. All right. So many shades, they thought I had a lazy eye huh? Shorty roll me smooth as my Mercedes ride huh? No love, cry when only babies die And when I go, that casket better cost a hundred thou 
I pray to God I look my killer in his eyes Snatch his soul out his shirt, let's take him for that ride OG is one who's standing on his own feet A boss is one who guarantee we gon' meet Fuck a blog dog, cause one day we gon' meet I'ma spaz on your ass like I'm on me Or a double stack, better nigga double that Jerry Jones money, nigga, you a running back Hershey Walker, Bo Jack Ricky Waters, better run that dope back Boss, and I put that on my Maybach 400 thou, bitch, you wish you say that I'm a boss, bitch, I'm a boss I'm a boss, I plan the shots huh? I call the cops huh? We in this bitch, it's going down Yeah, the king that with my mother